Howdy y'all, it's Jordan Smith. I'm doing a quick mobile upload today because we are in our house in Central Texas and we are selling it and we're getting out of here to pursue our dreams doing some other stuff. But before we got out of here completely, I wanted to talk a little bit about these windows here. These are the Anderson 100 series windows and I got them for a couple of reasons. One, cosmetically, I really like the way that they're uh, seams look here. It's a big step up from vinyl. So if you're looking for an economical window, I recommend going with something like this from a cosmetic standpoint because yes, they're more expensive than just straight vinyl, but the seams look so much cleaner. This chamfer here doesn't have any of that plastic vinyl getting uh, extruded out when they push the seams together. This is a cut and glued system that's a lot cleaner than what you get on vinyl. So it is still a white window, still a little more inexpensive than if you go up with like an aluminum, aluminum clad wood. But for my taste, it's just such a better fit and finish than what you get on vinyl and well worth the upgrade. I should also note that this video is not sponsored by Anderson. They don't know that I'm doing this. They haven't given me any money. They didn't give me the windows. I just really like this window and chose it for my own personal home. And I will brag on Anderson a little bit. We're moving out of here and we broke a couple of the windows over there. We threw some rocks with a lawnmower through two, not one, two of our windows. And so we needed those panes in before we could close as part of the, the, the uh, contract agreement. And Anderson is overnighting those windows to us free of charge. Um, again, they don't know who I am. They just were really great people. I called them up and said, hey, we need these in order to hit our closing date. They said, we completely understand. And they're shipping those to us overnight. So good job, Anderson. Great job with your customer um, with your customer support. It's been very helpful in our case. So back to the window. The second thing that I was concerned about over cosmetics is performance. So the NFRC, the National Fenestration Rating Council, judges a window off of four things. That's U-factor, solar heat gain coefficient, visible transmittance, and air leakage. So let's take those in order. U-factor. We are in the south and so our change in temperature from the inside to the outside isn't as great as what it might be in the north. So if we have, if we're trying to in the winter keep this place at 70 degrees, let's say, well it might be 30 degrees outside so we've got a delta T of 40. Well if you're up north and you're trying to keep your house at 70, it could be negative 30 outside so you've got a hundred degrees of swing between inside and outside. So you're really concerned about the U factor. What is the U factor? The U factor is thermal transmittance. So it's the inverse of R, which is the thermal resistance. So insulation, you're used to seeing R ratings. This wall behind me is a two by four wall with 13 R13 insulation in it with the brick and everything else. We get up to like 14.88 R or thermal resistance. If you divide that 14 point, or if you do one divided by 14.88, that gives you your U. That's how easily that material passes uh, heat through it. Um, for heat transfer, the equation is Q. Heat transfer equals the area times the delta T, the temperature between here and out there, times the U factor. And that U factor changes for all types of material. So in this case, with this window, I've got a U factor of 0.2 far, and that's somewhere around the point or 3.8 something, if I can do the math in my head real quick, 3.8 something R. So my wall is R15, let's say, and this window is R3.8, which sounds like a huge drop, and it is, but compared to a single pane of glass, it is incredibly more efficient. You can also do triple pane and get this thing to where it performs like an R5. Some people are claiming that they can get R8 and R10 out of their windows, which is incredible with triple pane and then there's some vacuum stuff on the horizon that is supposed to even be above and beyond that. For down here, it's really not worth my money to invest in higher U values. I'm sorry, <laughs> see I got it backwards. Lower U values, when you want low U values, which equates to a high R number. So down here, it doesn't really make sense for me to invest in even more U value because it's not so much the delta T, it's not so much the temperature difference between inside and outside that makes a difference. It's more my solar heat gain coefficient. So this direction here is west. 
So the sun right now is right there and it's going to keep going and you already see this line here. This is the sun creeping in. It's about three something o'clock right now and it's only going to get worse over time. That sun's going to start beating in here and I want to make sure that I don't just pull in tons of heat through these windows because with the U-factor I'm taking care of the conductive portion of heat but now I have to worry about radiation right because heat transfers in three ways conductive convective and radiation so light is radiated heat and I can get rid of most of my radiated heat by blocking the infrared I can get rid of some more by uh, blocking the ultraviolet that destroys fabrics and all that and this has a coating on it that takes care of both of those it gets rid of infrared and it gets rid of ultraviolet but now we have visible light that we have to deal with and there's a few different ways that we can do it we can fix that one is we can just block the light we can actually shade this we can put a tint on the window and when we put a tint on the window less light comes in and if less light comes in less radiation comes in less heat comes in but we're sort of defeating the purpose of a window right if we we're just going to make it a black tint we might as well just have a wall there so we want that light we don't want it to get too dark so what we do is we put a low e coating or a low emissivity coating now if you remember some of my welding videos on the infrared thermometers i go into a lot of detail on why emissivity is important on those thermometers and what emissivity is but basically emissivity is a material's ability to tr to radiate heat right so we put a low emissivity coating on the inside of the outside pane so if you say layer one is the outside of the outside pane two is the inside of the outside pane three is the inside of the inside pane and four is the outside of the inside pane we put a low emissivity coating in the south we put a low emissivity coating on the inside of the first pane and what that does is that keeps any heat that is absorbed by that glass from re-radiating into the cavity and then re-radiating into our um, our room here so we don't get the radiation we don't get as much radiation into the room anderson calls this smart sun so if you're buying an anderson window and you're in the south and you're wanting to keep the heat from coming in from the outside through radiation and light select smart sun there is a drawback to smart sun and then they have another one called sun which actually starts lowering the visible transmittance of the window too so that starts dimming the window that's the shading that's the drawback the higher the more coatings that you put on here and the more um, the less radiation that you let through emissivity is a portion of it low e but then it also sort of makes sense to lower that visible transmit and so on this uh, on this window it's got a solar heat gain coefficient of 0.19 which is low that's really good it's got a visible light transmissions of 0.43 which is also sort of low um, that 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 ranges from like 10 percent to 90 percent and this is 43 percent so it's pretty low but if you're comparing windows and you want to say okay this has a low solar heat gain coefficient and it's visible light transmission is low too but how how do those two play together does it ha does it give me a good heat coefficient solar heat gain coefficient without sacrificing too much visible light transmittance and the way you do that is something called the light to solar gain ratio so if you divide your visible transmittance by your solar heat gain coefficient then you're going to wind up with the LSG and on this window it's about 2.2 something around there which is good that's a, that's a lot of light with very little heat so it's not always apples to apples you've got to know where you live you got to know how much light is going to be out there in this case on a west wall even a visible transmittance even a visible transmittance of only 0.43 is still a lot of light because we've got that sun for nearly half the day blaring in here and it's worth it to knock that down a little bit to keep it from getting so hot in here and it's done a great job we've lived here for about three years now and we've never felt like oh man those west windows are just killing our home in fact you see we had always planned on putting curtains up here we never did because we never needed to we always thought well that's going to overheat and we're going to have to put some way of blocking that light because it's going to get way too hot it hasn't they've done a really good job on these low e coatings the last point of the four that the national fenestration rating council will give you is air leakage and in this case we've gone with a casement window and i like this because here i open that up open this up here 
and I've got one, two, three, three closure mechanisms that are pulling this window into the frame. And you see here, we've also got right there, we've got one, two hooks on the back side. And those hooks will grab as I'm closing. And it closes there. Those hooks grab, and then as I pull it in, it pulls that casement into the frame. So that gets rid of a lot of our air leakage that we would might have to worry about with a single or double hung. So I went with casement everywhere I could for my ingress and egress locations. Where I couldn't do that, I went with a, um, or where I could get away with it, I went with a fixed. And this is the fixed window here. I don't know, this is what I don't like about the 100s. This is the one thing that I'll knock the 100s about is how they mold together their fixed panes. You see that? That's, that's the factory approved install. You just screw, you just screw the, the windows together. It's a little bit cheap. I, I might, if I was doing another mold window and the budget allowed, I would upgrade to like a 200. Um, but have no complaints about it. I mean, other than that small nitpicky finish detail, it's a good window. It served us very well. Um, they've been very low maintenance and no problems except for throwing a rock through it. So if you have a lawnmower like mine, you might want to invest in tempered glass because you'll shatter them out with your throwing rocks through them. Thanks so much for watching. Thanks for watching it on the mobile format. Uh, comment below with your favorite economy windows or your your windows that might not be at the highest level of what we'd all want to do but you know budgets budgets are reality subscribe if we've earned it go follow us over on our social media accounts and we'll see you next time on smith house